finally, we're pushing out the review on the Surefire RC3 suppressor. Go ahead and roll the intro. Hey guys, thanks for checking out another Hatchet Cast episode, and we are going to be talking about the Surefire RC3. We've hinted at this for a while, we've had it honestly ever since it came out, um, and it's finally time to push out the video on our thoughts of the RC3. Before we get started, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button, and also a free way to help out the channel and to continue to push uh, our mission set further is to share this video with a friend or a family member or somebody you know that's a fellow shooter that would get something out of our content. That is the most organic way and easiest way to help out the channel. Also, if you want to help out the channel further, go check out our Hatchet Cast podcast on Spotify and listen to the conversations we have there. We have a Patreon link for that podcast as well, but you can watch it for free or listen for free on Spotify. And also come and train with us. If you wanna try out the RC3 suppressor in person, let me know. If you're gonna come train with us, we have a bunch of classes that just dropped on the website at barrelandhatchet.com. And the great thing about our classes is we just recently put in the payment program so that way you can, say for example, you take a class a year, well you can pay for that class throughout the year versus having to drop all that dough at the same time. The biggest thing is guys, just go out and get training. It's a great way to support the channel, continue to you know, help us do the work that we're doing. So. Without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the RC3. I'll talk about some of the specs. The biggest thing is going to be price point. I'll talk about some of my experiences and um, just the pros and cons, and then just my final synopsis on the suppressor itself. So let's go ahead and talk about the specs. All right, so this is the Surefire RC3. For those who don't know, the SOCOM 556 RC3. Surefire is really, really popular for the RC2, which had a huge contract with the military. Um, it's, in my opinion, one of the most durable cans out on the market. Um, it's extremely durable. Uh, you see them all the time, and it is literally a can that I've seen hundreds of thousands of rounds put through them. If you look at some of the RC2s that you know are within the military, you look at those things and you're like, dude, there has to be you know, three, four, or 500,000 rounds put through that can and it's still running strong. So as far as the RC2, Surefire has made a really good name for itself and created a strong legacy within suppressors with the RC2. And so the RC2 is a traditional style can, extremely durable, has their standard quick detach device on there with their locking collar. And so Surefire is kind of building upon that legacy. But now that we see a massive increase in technology and the design of suppressors is changing, you know, kind of led by Huxworks and uh, Griffin Armament doing those kind of open-ended, um, almost more flow-through style cans to release some of that back pressure, we're seeing a lot more of that in the industry. So Surefire is like, hey, you know, we need to come out with something as well. Uh, a lot of companies, or excuse me, a lot of people were asking, hey, when Surefire coming out with their version of a flow-through can that's also going to be extremely durable and also maintain the low signature that Surefire RC2 suppressor has been known for. Um, when we do our night vision class in the Alpha class, we actually take everybody's rifle and we shoot it, whether you're running a flash hider or you're running a, a suppressor, and we shoot it while the students get the ability to see how much signature does their suppressor or muzzle device or rifle give off at night under night vision and without night vision. So the RC2 always won the uh, contest when it came to signature reduction. What I mean by that is the amount of flame that's coming out the end of su the suppressor gives off a signature. It allows someone to see you. If you have a huge flame coming out, like you're running a muzzle brake, or if you guys have seen the dishkas, like those giant machine guns that they shoot over in the Middle East, has massive flames come out of that. Well, that flame is visible and he's able to be spotted. So 
that's something that you don't want to have is you don't want to have a massive flash and you want to be able to mitigate that. That's why we have flash hiders to mitigate some of that flash coming out the end. So what the suppressor does or what suppressors are supposed to do is supposed to also mitigate flash. We've, we've had some suppressors from certain companies that have literally created more flash than a muzzle brake where, I, you know, just on the design of it, it's like a massive three, four foot flame coming out the end of that. So that's obviously defeating the purpose of one of the purposes of a suppressor. The RC2 on that hand has always had an extremely good s signature reduction. Honestly, if I was to equate it to anything, it looks like a little Bic lighter flame coming out the end, which is incredible. A lot of the other suppressors out there that have a flow through style almost emit like a, a volume of sparks. And I'll talk about that signature reduction when it came to the RC3. But as far as the RC2, it did absolutely incredible. So with that being said, all of the, all the benefits of the RC2 is what people are expecting with the RC3. So we'll talk about price point. Price point on this bad boy, MSRP, is $1,800 for this suppressor. Um, that is a hefty price. Now you can find it for sometimes $1,600, but even then, that is a large price to pay for a suppressor. Um, you know, if you think about like maybe some of these other companies, they're coming in, you know, under a thousand bucks for a can, and it's a really good durable can. Uh, so you're getting into a very, very high price point, which means that this thing should have a very high return on investment in terms of the attributes that you're looking for when you buy a suppressor and what your suppressor should do for you. So what they're claiming on the website, 60% less back pressure means less toxic gas directed toward the shooter, a cleaner firearm, and superior recoil control. When it comes to flow-through style cans, for me, as a southpaw shooter, that is a big deal because I'm, you know, that ejection port's right in my face, so I'm getting all of that, that gas and all that excess back pressure, I'm eating that. So when they say 60% less back pressure, that means I'm assuming is 60% less back pressure than the RC2. Okay, so not in comparison with other manufacturer suppressors, but with the RC2 specifically, they're claiming that it's 60% less back pressure in the face of the shooter, uh, and also obviously a cleaner firearm because less of that carbon, if you run a traditional suppressor, all that carbon and all that extra gas back pressure is going into the chamber and inside the innards of the gun, making it dirtier a lot faster. It dries out the rifle a lot faster. So when it comes to the flow through style or lower back pressure style cans, you're getting less of that junk in the gun, which does honestly provide a cleaner firearm and better recoil control. The recoil control comes from a slower bolt speed. So you gotta think about this. When the gun goes off, if you have no suppressor, that energy comes back, that gas cycles that bolt, that, ga that bolt comes back and goes forward, cycles another round, and then you, you repeat the process. When you put a suppressor on there, you're increasing the back pressure, which is going to increase the bolt speed. So when you increase the bolt speed, the harder it's coming back towards you, the more recoil that you're gonna feel uh, once you fire that rifle. So obviously, bigger caliber guns, has a higher bolt speed, you have more mass coming back at you because it's a bigger bolt to accommodate the bigger round, so you're gonna feel more recoil. So what this is claiming to do, as well as a lot of other flow-through style or low back pressure style cans, is it's not increasing the bolt speed as much as a traditional suppressor. Very important. It also says it virtually eliminates explosive flash from the first round, fired to the last. in Connell construction delivers unmatched durability, and SOCOM suppressors reduce sound, flash, and dust signature for increased warfighter survivability and a more pleasant shooting experience at the range or in the field. So let's talk about a couple of different things. So one of the things is that this also has compatibility with all the other SureComs, Surefire SOCOM fast attached muzzle devices. So your Surefire war comps, your Surefire muzzle brakes, all of that type of stuff. It has the same lock and collar. So Good job on Surefire for continuing that line. It's a very robust locking system. It works very, very well. Um, obviously, the military has been running it for years and years and years, so you have thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of combat experience that have gone through the Surefire locking collar uh, attachment, and, it, and it's honestly became a standard in the industry uh, for people to use. So we're seeing that, obviously, this is a very tried and true locking collar, very tried and true uh, quick detach system, and also the muzzle devices do a very good job of mitigating recoil or mitigating flash depending on what you get, whether it's a brake or a flash hider. 
Now, one of the things that I will say about this can, let's talk about, let's just go into experiences here. This thing is pretty durable. If you look at the weight of it, it's obviously a heavier weighted can. It's very similar in weight to the RC2. It also has a really durable feel to it and durable construction. So I see a lot of the attributes of the RC2 in terms of durability and the construction of this, um, very, very similar. It honestly looks like at the end of the RC3, they chopped an RC2 end cap off and they put this other end cap style thing on there. Now, obviously the baffle design might be slightly different. However, that's just what it looks like visually. Um, so as far as durability, man, we put this thing through the ringer. We, you know, we're trying to, we shot it on full auto. We tried to uh, uh, just really putting a high round count on there, heating it up, seeing if there was any, any droop, any of that type of stuff. All of the durability features that we loved about the RC2, we see with the RC3. Now, the next question is, is my, my signature reduction? That's a very important question. Uh, it's one of the biggest attributes that I look for specifically. Um, for us as citizen warfighters, uh, as, as American warfighters, we're always looking for being more effective on the battlefield or in the fight. So uh, you got to think about for yourself, signature reduction should be a very big concern. It should be a very big priority for you if you're trying to survive in, in a conflict zone. So if you're running a muzzle break, Obviously, yeah, it'll mitigate recoil, but you're, you're trading that cost for, um, you know, signature reduction, right? You're, you're saying, hey, I'm, a, I'm willing to take the risk on my signature reduction and have more of a signature so I can have less recoil. So you have to kind of weigh those pros and cons. Now, if you're going to run a muzzle brake inside your suppressor, perfect. Uh, that muzzle brake actually sometimes acts as extra additional ba baffles within inside of your suppressor. So um, if you're going to run a dedicated suppressed gun all the time, then it obviously doesn't matter. But if you're going to be running suppressor on and off, I recommend something like a flash hider to mitigate that flash. So the RC2, like I told you earlier, was extremely good at mitigating flash. It was the best I've ever seen. Um, a lot of the flow through style cans that we see or low back pressure style cans, it emits a volley of sparks. Um, and I can tell you right now, for us, in the very beginning, probably for the first, I would say for the first six months, we experienced whenever you would shoot this thing, a huge fireball that would come out the front on the first round. And then we were like, man, there's got to be some reason. Um, and so I had a closed tined war comp, Surefire war comp muzzle device, which is of their older Surefire SOCOM series. And so I read this forum and says, hey, you can't run closed timed, all right? You need to run an open, like a prong style or a uh, muzzle break or something like that that's a more updated Surefire war comp or updated Surefire SOCOM muzzle device. So I ended up swapping it out and then it wasn't all the time that I was getting this huge flash, like a huge fireball from the first round pop, meaning the first round I shoot out of the suppressor once I am put the suppressor on and I go to shoot, usually that first round you get a first round pop and a big flame. So I wasn't experiencing that um, that much after I swapped out for a standard three prong Surefire War Comp. So that kind of went away, but at the times, whenever we would look at it under night vision or we would look at it just bare naked eye, you would see a volley of sparks that was coming out the end of this muzzle device. Now understand, the volley of sparks wasn't as visible with the bare naked eye, but under, under night vision, it's pretty significant. Um, so you have all of these openings so just to be able to lower that back pressure, but with that, you're letting, allow, allowing a lot more of that explosion from the round and all that pressure kind of coming out the front. So you're gonna naturally have that volley. And to Surefire's credit, that is something that we have seen as a consistent thing with all back, low back pressure cans. Um, so if you have extra additional openings, um, you're going to see that. Now, a couple of the companies that we did see a lower signature reduction in terms of a low back pressure can, um, the Huxworks one did really well once it was broken in. Uh, still had a volley of sparks come out, but not as bad as some others. And Griffin Armament also did a very good job. I understand Griffin Armament has been doing this open style low back pressure design on the front end cap for a while now. Um, so the, uh, uh, they call it the eco flow. And so you do see some of that, that sparking, but it's not as significant as some other ones that come out where it's, it's a very heavy volume of sparks. So um, whenever we were running this, that was something that we were looking for, and I did see a pretty decent volume of sparks. I will say, though, that the recoil reduction was good. However, 
I did feel like in the beginning, before this thing got broken in, it had more flame coming out of the end of the barrel. Um, as it broke in, it became less and less, almost like as a seasoning of carbon started to build up on the inside of the suppressor, I was experiencing less and less of a signature and it was, it was doing a better job. However, at the same time, it does not do obviously as good of a job as the RC2 when it comes to signature reduction. Obviously, I should expect that when it comes to the you know, lower back pressure cans. Uh, it's gonna have less, you know, more signature that it, it, it gives off. That's just one of those pros versus cons. You gotta weigh it. Can't have everything. But, you know, it took a while for Surefire to come out with this. And so a lot of people were expecting some like really cosmic groundbreaking thing. And it's really not that groundbreaking. Um, it's a really good can. It's super durable. It does the job well. Um, but for the price point, you can pick up an RC2. If you're really concerned about signature reduction, I would go towards an RC2. Um, you get weight, it's the same weight roughly, almost. Uh, not maybe exactly, maybe this is a little bit lighter, but the RC2 is relatively about the same. And running an RC2 it is the best, one of the best signature reduction cans out there on the market. Extremely durable, it's gonna last you forever. Um, so if that's, if that's your high priority, is not gonna be about your back pressure, but your signature, I'll go with an RC2, and it's also gonna run you probably, you can find it for less than a grand. So it's gonna be a lot cheaper uh, than the RC3. So for me, the RC3, it's a good can. The problem is, is your price point. Like it's a very expensive suppressor. Um, so it, you have to kind of weigh that cost versus benefit analysis and think, is this really going to do that much more for me? Uh, or can I get something else that's similar and maybe even buy two suppressors for the price of one RC3? Um, you know, there are other companies that have a lower back pressure suppressor. A lot, it costs a lot less. And so that's just something that you got to think about. Now, if you can afford it, I'll tell you right now, the durability of the RC3 is impressive. Like it is just the same type of durability, construction, and attributes that we see with the RC2. So um, one of the things that we did also see with this, a lot of flow through style, design cans that are out there. The key is, is, is durability, all right? So for me, I'm looking at durability, I'm looking at signature reduction, I'm looking also at, um, is it pleasant to shoot? Like if I'm getting gassed out, it's obviously not a good thing. Some of that also has to do with your gun. Is your, if your rifle's over gassed without a suppressor, when you put a suppressor on, it's gonna be extremely gassy. So it also is gonna depend on your rifle build as well. But if you have a decently gassed well gas gun, a well-tuned gun, and you throw a suppressor on there with the RC3, for example, it's gonna be relatively pleasant to shoot. Uh, it was a less back pressure, I could tell you that, from the RC2, but in comparison to some other cans that are out there, really not much different. In fact, um, you know, there is a, uh, the Huxworks cans, honestly, are incredible in terms of back, low back pressure. So they have kind of perfected that design so something to think about uh, as far as the durability, what you're going to be getting out of the RC3, in my opinion, is your durability, comfort, the similar attaching uh, method. If you have a bunch of Surefire devices, uh, you have that ability to kind of have that same continuity uh, with your attachment method. And if you're, look, if you're just a big Surefire guy, um, this is obviously a good can to have. So in my opinion, guys, I, I think the RC3 is good. It does have a lower back pressure. If you want a lower back pressure can that's extremely durable, uh, this is a good thing. The price point is obviously really steep, so it's something that you should consider. Um, but overall, whether you decide to get the RC3 or any suppressor, the key is, is buy a suppressor. Like, I would highly recommend going out and getting suppressor. It's a survivability tool. It changes the tone of the rifle. It helps you to stay alive. It helps a 5.56 suppressor helps to make it very difficult to distinguish where the shot's coming from. So lower signature, it's good for night vision um, type shooting. It's good for uh, you know signature on the ground. If you're shooting in a more dusty and dirty environment, you're gonna have less brush and less disturbance of the environment around you. Um, so overall, the can is, is good. Uh, obviously the price point is gonna be something that you may have to you know, figure out if that works for you or not within your budget. So guys, I wanna go ahead and leave you with uh, a final message, and that is, you know, if you're seeking comfort in all of these man-made things, I'll tell you right now that 
having comfort in things and all this kit and this gear or your job is never going to bring you real comfort. And I want to talk to you guys from a chapter in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 that really brought me a lot of comfort um, and brought me a lot of encouragement. So if you're going through a hard time out there, I want to share this Bible verse with you. And it was something that really just really gave me a lot of security and peace and uh, really brightened my day. And I hope that this will do it the same for you. And so Paul is writing to the church in Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to start off in verse 3. And it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces you in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. So one of those things is a lot of times that for me in my life, man, like I would always pray anytime I was going through a trial or a hard time, I'd be like, God, like, just take this trial away from me. Take me out of this situation. And most of the time, he never answered that. And then I started shifting my prayers and being like, God, can you bring me comfort? God says, Peter's, Paul is saying, you know, that God is the God of all comforts. He wants to love you and shower you with love and peace. He's not a God that you have to work towards. He's not, you don't have to crawl a mile on your knees or, you know, uh, whip yourself or, you know, pray 60 times a day while also sacrificing and do, doing a pilgrimage. You can't work for the gift. He gives you the gift freely, and that gift is love. And with that love, he also, also brings you that comfort because we know that Jesus dying on the cross and raising again in three days, he died for our sins, and he did that for us because he loves us so that way we can spend eternity with him. So for what I was doing is I was, I was praying now, like, God, comfort me through this trial. And it honestly made going through that hard time in my life easier because I was being comforted by the Lord and, and you just have this almost like this calm that goes over top of you. It's, it's so strange. But at the same time, it's awesome. And, you know, the reason I think that God lets us go through some of those storms and those hard times is say, for example, you're going through a really hard time or you're going through a trial. And then one day you get through that trial and God comforts you through that process. And you see your friend or your family member that's going through the exact same thing, the exact same trial. You now, God has given you the tools to be able to comfort that person and bring his comfort to them through you by being like, hey, I get what you're going through, man. I, I understand. I went through the same thing as well, and I want to let you know that God brings you comfort, and you can start to connect with that person to help them through their trial. It's like a, a life experience, if you will. Just like I went through the experiences of this RC3, one day you're going to experience the same type of thing when you get one or you experience one. So then we have that common ground where we can connect on our experiences. And so... What I want to share with you guys is be comforted in the Lord. And, and the other thing I'm going to say is prayer, when you pray for somebody, that blessing is for you. It's not because we need all these prayers to make it that where God can hear us, because if it's not enough prayers, he won't hear us. No, he's, he's right here with you in the room. He's here. Your, his Holy Spirit is here with us as we go through our trials. But the biggest thing is, is say, for example, you guys, I, I, I'm going through a hard time, right? And I tell you guys, hey, I, can you pray for me? I'm going through these specific trials right now. And then you guys pray for me. And then I come back one day and I'm like, hey, yo, God, help me with this. And this situation worked out. And he, he did this, this, and this. And, and not only am I encouraged by that, but so are you because you were praying for me. And you're like, wow, God answered my prayer for Eric. And he was able to work through that. So it becomes a blessing to you as well. So by praying for other people, not only do you get to comfort them, but provide comfort to them with the Lord through you, but also you yourself will be comforted and, and be blessed and be uplifted by that. So I hope that this video helped some of you guys out, maybe help make the decision a little bit easier for what you're looking to purchase. I know there's a lot of stuff out there, but at the same time, 
guys, put your hope and your comfort in Jesus, man. He, he has been wanting to have that relationship with you for so long. He knows exactly how he designed you. He knows who you are. He, has a, he built your sense of humor. He built your personality. He loves everything about you. And he wants you to turn to him and accept his free gift of love and salvation and, and not be a slave to this world and a slave to the rat race of sin and, and this life and to be free within him. So guys, if you get something out of these videos or this really resounded with you, share this video with a friend. Help continue to push on what we're doing. Come train with us. Sign up for a class at brownhatch.com. It really helps us out, helps us to continue this, to put out good content. And I love fellowshipping with you guys when I see you in, per in person in class. So guys, make sure you comment below if you have any experience with the RC3 or if you have a hard time you're going through and you want to put a prayer request in the comments. There's tons of people within the community that would love to pray for you. And if you are looking to know who God is, email me at team at barrelandhash.com. I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to correspond with you and talk to you about the Lord and amazing work he's done in my life. And I want you to experience the same thing. So guys, go out there, look out for each other, pray for each other, comfort and love each other. Love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Train to be the eternal asset. And I'll see you on the next one.